Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Jai Sri Javaji. Today we will be continued reading from the book Sachin Tendulkar Playing It My Way My Autobiography with Boria Majumdar. Part 17 England in India January to March 1993 There's nothing quite like playing in front of home crowds and in home conditions. When the first test at Eden Gardens in Kolkata started on 29 January 1993, the enthusiasm among the spectators acted as huge motivation. Muhammad Azaruddin, our skipper, who always relished playing at Eden Gardens, set the tone with a brilliant 182. While I managed a half century, by the fifth day we needed just 34 to win and to my complete amazement 70,000 people had come to the stadium to see us knock off the winning runs and take a 1-0 lead in the three test series. I remember hitting a short ball from Paul Jarvis, the England fast bowler, over square leg to the boundary to win the game. Back in the dressing room, there was no holding back. We really needed that win after the disappointment in South Africa and it felt particularly great to see the spinners come into play in conditions that suited their art. The English batsmen I had seen hitting through the line in England in 1990 were now struggling against the turning ball. The boot was on the other foot and we were enjoying every moment of it. Playing spin in the subcontinent is quite a challenge and England were finding it very difficult. We had a three-pronged spin attack in Anil Kumble, Rajesh Chauhan and Venkatapati Raju, a lethal threesome with the fast bowlers Kapil Dev and Manoj Prabhakar, both very able with the bat. We had the flexibility to go in with five bowlers, making our attack look that much more potent. The second match of the series started in Chennai on 11th February. It was in this match that I got my first home test 100. The surface, a very good track to bat on, was hard with a little bit of bounce. I scored 165 and could easily have gone to score a double turn if I hadn't played a disappointingly loose shot to Ian Salisbury, the leg spinner. I had set out to hit the ball over mid-wicket and ended up top edging it back to the bowler. Naujot Sidhu also made a century and we posted a sizable total of 560. Despite some resistance from Neil Fairbrother, in their first innings, England were forced to follow on. Chris Lewis put up a good fight in the second innings, making his maiden century, but Kumble took six wickets and we ended up winning the match comfortably. We headed to Mumbai for the third test four days later, having already taken an unassable 2-0 lead in the series. This was to be my first test match at the Wangde Stadium where I had grown up playing a lot of my cricket and hence it was a homecoming of sorts. It was the same for Vinod Kamli, who got a spectacular double hundred in this match. England must have been reasonably pleased to post their biggest total of the series in their first innings, 347, with Graham Hick making his highest test score of 178. Yet we posted an impressive 591 in reply of which I contributed 78 and then Manoj Prabhakar took three quick wickets and the spinner did the rest. Handing the English another innings defeat, it's fair to say that we had successfully put the disappointment of South Africa behind us. Anil Kumble, who had bowled beautifully in all three test matches, was declared player of the series. Anil was becoming the match winner we had been looking for and discipline and rigour were the hallmarks of his craft. He did not turn the ball much bad but made up for it with great accuracy and tenacity. I never saw Anil let up in intensity and have nothing but the highest regard for him, one of the greatest players to have represented India. The ODI series was more closely contested and we went into the last match at Gwalior on 5 March 1993. Needing to win to level the series, up till then, I had had a medical run batting at November 5 or 6. However, at Gwalior, the, I managed to score a quick 34 of 30 balls at a crucial time in the game and was involved in a key partnership with Azar, 
who scored a billion 95 not out as he took us to victory the england series marked the beginning of a very successful phase in indian cricket we followed up by beating zimbabwe in a one off test and home and were gradually getting into a healthy winning habit in home conditions in odis we had started winning close contests and we went into the me- next major one day tournament the hero cup also featuring south africa sri lanka the west indies and zimbabwe as one of the favorites turning my arm over not long before the hero cup i played a festival match in bangalore where kiran moore normally a wicket keeper bowled me a juicy full toss i tried to hit it for six but ended up twisting my wrist it was a freakish injury and while i was able to continue batting i was in serious pain after a few days the injury had still not eased and it was decided that i needed to have an injection this was my first cortison injection and dr anand joshi flew in from mumbai to delhi to administer the shot i was to be injected on my wrist very close to the palm and with the hero cup just days away i was apprehensive about the recovery the injection which was pretty painful was the first of a hundred or more cortison injections over the course of my career the one match of the hero cup i will never forget is a semi final against south africa on 24th november 1993 we batted first scoring a very modest 195 in our 50 overs we knew we needed to bowl and feel exceedingly well if we were to stop south africa from making the final our bowlers led by anil did a very good job and at the end of the 49th over south africa needed 6 runs to win having made a match of it despite scoring to few runs we now had to decide who should be entrusted with the task of bowling the all important final over i volunteered to take the responsibility i had not bowled on the day and so i thought my bowling would have a surprise element to it also the track had assisted the slower bowlers and couple space might have been easier for the south african batsmen to deal with then i realized that after fielding for 49 overs and in the slightly nippy evening my body was stiff and my hands were frozen i knew i had to warm up again quickly because there was no second chance one wide could mean the match was over the first ball was a good length delivery to brian macmillan one of the best all-rounders in the world at the time who managed a single but in the process south africa lost fanny de villiers who is trying to get macmillan back on strike was run out by a throw from salil ankola importantly it meant that macmillan was at the non strikers end and the new man was facing me this was my opportunity alan donald the new batsman was in great with the bat and if i managed to pin him down we definitely had a chance of winning the contest the key was to keep the big hitting brian macmillan away from the strike as donald walked to the wicket i knew he was feeling the tension i just had to hold my nerve and not try anything fancy i deliberately bowled slower to him and even tossed one up giving it a bit of spin donald was unable to cope with the lack of pace and ended up putting himself and his team under pressure by playing out three dot balls he didn't manage a single till the fifth ball of the over south africa now needed a boundary of the last ball to win for our part we just needed to stop the boundary and we were in the final the key to handling pressure situations like this is to keep yourself steady follow your instincts and think clearly i was aware that there had been occasions in the past when a batsman had got an inside edge attempting a huge heave and the ball had beaten the keeper standing up and sped to the boundary in such circumstances the little the bowling team can do remembering this i asked vijay yadav our keeper to stand back as if to a fast bowler it's difficult to believe looking back but macmillan did try a slog and he did get an inside edge yadav easily picked up the ball 20 yards back and south africa could only sneak a single 
in the most dramatic of finishes we had managed to win and were in the final i had considered only 3 runs in this over and we had won by 2 runs the packed eden gardens crowd which numbered close to 100000 turned hysterical paper torches were lit all round the stands creating an unbelievable atmosphere i felt a sense of exhilaration and was soon engulfed but by my teammates it was one of the best one day internationals i had played in the other rather unexpected contributor to the indian victory was a mongoose which kept coming on to the ground during the second half of this day night and counter at the eden gardens it seemed that every time the mongoose came into the field the momentum shifted and the south africans lost a wicket while it was just a coincidence of course it turned out to be a lucky coincidence for india after such a nerve-wracking semi-final the final was relatively easy after with anil running through the west indies lineup to give us the title he bowled brilliantly and finished off with career best figures of 6 to 12 as we won the hero cup in front of a packed eden gardens to make the victory even sweeter i managed to get the wicket of brian lara getting brian lara out was interesting because ajit who had traveled to kolkata with me to watch the semi final and the final had mentioned to me in the hotel that i should look to get brian lara out if i got a chance to bowl to him and also suggested that i should bowl stump to stump to him as it happened i did get a chance to bowl to brian who had opened the batting for the west indies after he had hit me for few runs i bowled him a delivery slightly outside the off stump which nipped back in a shade and bowled him delighted with the wicket i immediately thought of the discussion i had had with ajit my first year of cricket on home soil had gone really well however there were still things i desperately wanted to do one was getting my first odi 100 and another was opening the batting for india in one days india in new zealand march to april 1994 it was the morning of 27th march 1994 and later that day where we were playing new zealand in the second game of a four match odi series in auckland navjot sidhu our first choice opener woke up with a stiff neck and was in no position to play that's when i went up to azar and our manager ajit wadeka a former indian captain and a leading batsman of his time and pleaded with them to give me an opportunity to the top of the order why did i think i should open well i had the ability to attack bowlers and play shots from the word go and in the one day game the key was to take advantage of the field restrictions in the first 15 overs i was sure that i just needed a chance to prove myself i told vadekar sir that if i fail i would never ask him again in any case there was no reserve opener in the team and they had no choice but to experiment with an irregular opener in place of siddu if they put me at the top they could still get a middle order batsman to fill in for me at number 4 or 5 after a lot of pleading they finally agreed new zealand scored just 142 batting first but we still needed to make a good start as i walked out to bat i felt different in some way i told myself that this was my big chance to open the batting for india i did not want to let down the captain and the coach Once I was at the wicket I cleared my mind and was just intent on hitting the ball hard come what way it was one of those days when everything fell into place and soon I couldn't wait for the next delivery the quicker the better as far as I was concerned I managed to score 82 of 48 balls finally holding out to the left arm spinner matthew hart of a leading edge i had hit 15 fours and two sixes after that i no longer had to plead with vadekar sir to allow me to open i continued to score runs that position for the rest of the series which ended up being tied 2 to 2 
Okay all, let's end up for today. We shall continue to start reading the chapters of the book Sachin Tendulkar, Playing It My Way, My Autobiography with the next video. Until then, stay tuned. Thank you. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe.